Another day, another Dead Cells run, or at least that's what I'm doing right now. Anyway, yeah, just back to normal mode. Pretty much gonna do the 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 end of Richter mode, which I didn't really, which I I got started on last time, but did not actually finish. Uh, you know what? With the with the new Dracula outfit too, why not? You know, I still think it's kind of weird that we get the the uh the last Dracula outfit. Like listed after the uh whatever that other one. Eh, you know what? Let's do sigil uh, peril sigils. I still gotta do a run on that at some point in time, so why not? Hey, Yulia, welcome to more. Uh, yeah, probably just a quick dead cell stream. I was gonna, I would say, if anything, not really planning to do a huge amount for this one here. Oh, I'll say, thank you for the sub. By the way, I will be back to doing uh the. What do we got? Uh, the uh, uh, Final Fantasy soon. Oh, you need to you need to actually do the. There's so 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 many things I am missing out on as of recent, but I am planning to be doing that much more. There we go. Also, what do you got? That much more in terms of contents uh, right now. Right now, in fact, exactly right now. Ah, oh, I tell ya. It is... Wait, am I just gonna go... I, I'm, I'm realizing right now that it's just like, do I wanna just do another tactics run again? I just did... I just did a tactics run. Yeah, let's go survival. You know what? Peril Sigils could be fun as a run to do, but I just did a tactics run. It's like melee tactics. Let's uh, just uh, change it up, do something a little bit different. I'm playing Final Fantasy 16 myself, uh, ah, isolated from the world until I finish it. Yeah, I hear Final Fantasy 6 actually apparently pretty good. People have been talking it up. And honestly, I have liked a lot of the, the newer Final Fantasies comparatively, so... I don't know. 15 was good. I, 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 despite my my lack of playing it, I've been, I was enjoying uh, Stranger of Paradise and everything. That's decently fun. There's some good stuff there. I don't know. Also, hello, swag veterans. Hey, welcome to... Uh, honestly, just another casual sort of run. Don't know. I don't know if I really feel like doing a, a another, like, showcase run right now. I, I just woke up. I, I took big nap today. It took a big old big boy big nap. Don't really know if I feel like... Like, oh, let's do the good content. Maybe I will at least go do, like, a something a little bit later on. I don't know. At the grind progress in Final Fantasy VII. Final Fantasy VII does have a fairly simple sort of grind. Uh, well, after you get to a certain point in the game, you do have the... Uh, what is it called? Uh, the, the, the enemies that are in the pots that allow you to give them like elixirs and they give you like a huge amount of experience i remember that i did when i was fighting against like emerald and ruby weapon which worked i mean it worked it wasn't like super easy or anything and you did have to like i think use the exploit that allowed you to if you like, if you really wanted to, if you really wanted to get the most out of it, you have to use the exploit that gave you extra, that lets you, ah, duplicate elixirs. But even with just the elixirs that you had in the game, you could still get a good amount of, you know, yeah. So I'm kind of like working off of apparel sigils, at least for right now. Even with the elixirs you were given in the game, you could still get a good amount of, of experience just doing that alone. Has some flaws, but the highs are incredibly high. I mean, it's... I, I, I'm just happy to see because, you know, as much as I did like Final Fantasy XV, I did think it was kind of... Uh, uh, Gameplay-wise, it was not very good. Like, story-wise, it was also... Like Final Fantasy XV, I did think it was kind of... Uh, uh, Gameplay-wise, it was not very good. Like, story-wise, it was also not very good. However, the individual characters and, you know, the the areas and some of the smaller storylines, I thought were all... were all pretty, pretty solid. All 
right, there we go. And that should do that. Yeah, because it's just like, a, I, I like the really, you know, character focus type of stuff that they were doing in that game. Instead of just, you know, uh, again, uh, d there was obviously a huge component of being, uh, say, hey, save the world sort of stuff, but... There was also just a lot of we're on a, a road trip type of stuff, which I thought which I thought was fun. Alright, Final Fantasy 16 is good at making you hyped about the important points of the story, sometimes to a ridiculous degree. Eh. Well, I still got uh, I still got a ridiculous I is there even all that much of a story really to to uh to, to, to Stranger Paradise? I mean, yes, the, 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 there's chaos and the act of killing it. However, it's just like it, <laughs> there's a there's a point where you just kind of question, and by a point, I mean they explicitly say in the story where you question the uh, even the existence of chaos. So, like, I don't know. Hello, silver linings. Give me kisses and tell me you love me. Sure, sure, sure. Subbed for thirty two months. <laughs> Yeah, that's about all I got. <laughs> not very good at doing the kisses. What can I say? I'm trying my best, but it's like it's not really, it's not really my strong point now, is it? What do I want to take here? I'm just, I, I'm just thinking. Uh, miss what doesn't kill me. It's, that had such good. That, that I, I miss the the newer version of it. What's the run? Oh, we're just gonna do Richter mode. I got that unlocked yesterday, finally, on the save file. I had it unlocked on the other save file for, for a long time, but now I got it unlocked on this save file, and we're gonna go uh, get get that finished, because it's been a while since I've done it. Since, uh, you know, DLC has come out, and I have... And I, I, I should get all of the items unlocked, finally. I uh, just decided I'm going to start doing a lot more casual runs that are not actually going to go up on the channel, basically. Which is why we're here right now. Yeah, anybody else? There you go. What's Richter mode? The mode where you play as Richter, of course. No, of course. <laughs> just play Dead Cells, 20 XDX, and the first person puzzle games like Portals. Or what, The Witness? <laughs> are you enjoying The Witness? How did you enjoy The Witness? I like that game. Oh, fun game. That way. First person puzzle games is a genre I don't really think too much about, I'll say. Not really much of anything of interest. All right. Still want to try and get uh, something that's going to actually synergize with the, the build that I'm doing. Ah, we'll see. Not like you're going to use those elixirs anyway. I don't think that elixirs are that important in a Final Fantasy game. I mean, yeah, they're good, obviously, but there are also so many alternatives that, that work out just as well. I do not think it's something absolutely essential, and if you don't get it... Like, like I would rather have the extra experience and everything, especially given that you have the whole uh, Materia system and whatnot. Looks as they're too good to use most of the time. Ah, you're talking to somebody that plays a ton of roguelikes. Do you ever think that I pass up the opportunity to use like a, 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 a you know, lightning wand and net hack or whatever just because it's powerful? No, you use that thing because otherwise you die. <laughs> there we go. I don't know. I feel like I never really have that sort of too good to use type of type of issue. Cause I, I I grew up in the in the roguelike era. No, I didn't. I but I did I, I I did play a lot of those in the past. What can I say? Just got really into net hack back in the day. Right? Yeah, I see you there. Hopefully, I can get like an upgrade for the, the like, like I said, main thing right now is getting a an appropriate uh, primary weapon to use. Because as it is still kind of, you know, going to be dropping off in effectiveness pretty quickly. Especially as soon as I switch out the... Especially as soon as I switch out the... Oh, come on. Now. Oh, my God. the, the it, it blocked the... 
it blocked uh, me hitting the the bats with the invincibility barrier on that. Okay, anyway. This should work. Yeah, especially with the... Look, losing health with this weapon is not a bad thing, right? See? See? There you go. That's how you do it. Okay. Uh, Megan Roguelite, what do you think of uh, every roguelite needs? Need a, I value your opinion more than the rest of the internet. Oh, what do you think? I mean, it's... What? What? What is the one thing everything needs? Uh, probably like a very clear realization of exactly what you did wrong. If you lose a run, I should have the understanding that I lost a run because I did this. Not because it was some sort of weird happenstance, but that it was very clearly this sort of thing. And I know that's a very vague way to kind of describe it, but I always feel like it, it's it's important that, you know, a game is balanced in a way that you know why you lost. <laughs> you can pinpoint the exact decision you made or something like that. And again, that's a very vague sort of way of looking at it, but uh, it's important to have in mind as you as you design anything. Ah, like I, I, what, what is, is there like a specific thing that I could say? I'm just trying to think right now. Uh, it's, it's so hard because it's like, I, I wouldn't want to say like some, like, oh, you got to have the slay the spire map or something. Because I know a lot of games do that, but it's not like that's essential for doing things. Like a level of fairness. Oh, one of the most important... You know, one of the things I always say when it comes to... To like any sort of a uh, roguelike, roguelite or whatever. That it's like you should have high level of customizability. Like you shouldn't be entirely reliant on RNG. And I feel like games that... Really let you... Customize your character more. Even if that is reliant on the ability to... Uh, even if it's reliant entirely on your your own skill at the game is important. Now, I talked about that a lot with uh, with Noita when I was playing it. The idea that one of the major things that comes up as as you're playing Noita, I think, is the fact that you are really beholden to the the RNG of the entire thing. I always thought that that game could really use a lot more shops or abilities to change like the spells or like alter weapons and whatnot. But instead it's largely based on how much exploration of the map do you do with the exploration getting increasingly more difficult over time, which is definitely a way that you can have a, a sort of skill based way to do customization, but it is still, it's really harsh. Like in Noita especially, it's extremely harsh. But then you look at something like, uh, say, NetHack, where knowing the interactions that every single, every single item has with each other, and like how stuff, how, how to get specific items from areas is a huge part of actually progressing in the game. Uh, you look at like Binding of Isaac, you have very clear examples. Uh, stuff like the, the, the devil rooms, knowing how they work and knowing how to get the most out of them, I think is incredibly important. Uh, obviously, dead cells. There's a lot of like, you know, the skill. There is RNG, but you, you also provided that you don't get hit a lot and stuff like that. Uh, you have ability to like re-roll things. You have... Uh, the ability to reroll like affixes, you have the ability to reroll shops, a bunch of stuff like that. It's uh, again, it's vague. I don't like the fact of how vague that is, but it's it's like I I, I think that randomization, while an important element in in like any sort of roguelite, ability to deal with randomization and ability to 
like choose your own destiny destiny ultimately at the end of the day is important even if you do have to work in a largely randomized largely randomized context there should always be something you can do so that you don't get to the point where you you completely lack resources because of bad rng yeah that's a, another thing that I thought that, uh, did that really well was Undermine. Undermine has the the entire shrine system, which gives you basic stat ups in a way that uh, in, say, Binding of Isaac, if you never get any damage up, uh, in Undermine, you can always find some way of getting a good run going just because you always have the shrines to go to pray to. And I think that makes a huge difference. Because, yeah, even if you go for some of the more powerful items in the form of, like, uh, 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 the angel items or the devil items, that doesn't necessarily guarantee that you're going to have a good a good run going on. That you're, not, that you're necessarily going to be getting good items. That just means you have a higher chance of getting good items. Whereas, like, Undermine says there is a place where you can upgrade your stats at all points in time. And there is a risk-reward to it, but there is still always an alternative if you are just getting total, total Garbo items the entire time. And I think that was a really good idea on the part of the developers for that one. I don't like you. Alright, come on. Yeah. I don't want to die to a curse immediately if I can. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, you can be absolute shit at action games and still have a good run because you made good decisions. It's good. It's it's a good I like it's like I said, randomization is obviously an important ah, element to like any one of these games. Just being, you know, because that's what gives you that much replayability and everything. However, it's like ultimately there should be ways that you can rescue yourself if the RNG is just total trash garbage. Even if it means making really risky plays, even if it means really, really going hard into like some sort of element of the game that would not be very fun otherwise. Like, for example, NetHack. Uh, remember not like. Uh, uh, there's a. Oh, you can always hang around in the level. Uh, d d d go just sacrifice everything on an individual level to your gods if you find an altar somewhere. And then make it so that you do still have a... Oh my god, please, everybody. <laughs> have mercy on me, my god. Oh. There's always something you can do. Oh, whether it is, you know, trying to dig for victory, going into you know, like wand of wishing instantly, choosing to break wands on top of yourself, uh, which causes a big explosion, but then also that would look pretty cool. Uh, causes a big explosion, but then also gives you oh, a pretty huge amount of damage. Like risk reward, knowledge reward, ah, risk reward, knowledge reward, um just like something something that can alleviate jesus christ uh the problems you know i, I look at like uh for example dead cells we always have the if you're if you're doing really badly you do always have that option of stuff like oh uh, dead inside plus like recovery i was using in the last stream that i was doing you have uh, alienation plus acceptance combo, which I think really helps out. You have Midas blood if you really want to try and go that route and just out money everything. It's a good like risk reward type of thing. But then, you know, of course, there's also realizing the different routes and what they can give you. Stuff like prioritizing fractured falls, or the fractured falls stuff, going for the, or the fractured shrine stuff grabbing that because that will give you legendary weapons prioritizing specific legendary weapons entirely and you and utilizing wish in an effective way is a good way to get a run going even if everything otherwise has been total and complete garbage right ah there's that entire thing it's cursed sword if you decide the run is really that bad you always got that option of cursed sword right 
you know, but also, also, you know, I do think that is an important thing in a lot of those games too, in, in a lot of games like this too, which is like having, having like judicious sort of planning to your run also helps a lot too. Stuff like, okay, you know, I always took a, yeah. Oh man, oh man. Like for example, I've been playing a lot of like a uh, Darkest Dungeon 2 lately. Making sure that you have the right sort of uh, sort of in items is important. Making sure that you have the right sort of like temporary use items and that you're using them when you absolutely need them, also important. That's that's the sort of stuff that doesn't come from luck, that doesn't come from risk, that just comes from from planning out things well. <laughs> So yeah, I, I think that that's an important thing where it's like you want to build the game with the idea in mind that it's just like, okay, this is what's going to happen on the absolute worst luck possible. This is what I'm going to do to extend the an olive branch to the players. <laughs> this is what I'm going to do to make sure that no run is going to be total and absolute garbage and that there's always going to be something you can do. Even if it's extremely unpleasant, <laughs> even if it's extremely risky and will just end your run immediately, here's something that you can do. Even if it requires you to have been thinking about this since the very beginning of the game. <laughs> it's like at least you'll realize at some point and start to plan for that sort of thing. Or set aside resources to do it. Something like that. I don't know. Uh... Like I said, I think the main thing that I was thinking about with Noita is that it's just like Noita is a lot of being at the hands of RNG. And there's very little ability to, for example, go backwards in the game. So it's like if you want to if you want to try and dig up through the, the holy mountain, it's hard to do that. <laughs> like you can't just decide to do that. You need to have the sort of run that can do that. Ultimately, like your choice is pretty much based on how good do you play the game and that can unfortunately be a little bit stifling because of the fact that well Noita has a lot of options and they expect you to be using a lot of those options given how how hard the oh my god please given how hard enemies scale in that game so it's like you ultimately are there with the... You're ultimately given the, the intent to try and... Uh, if things are going poorly in Noita, what you do is you go down. You go down to the next level and hope that you find... Actually, no, give that one to me. You go down to the next level and hope that you find a better wand, you find better spells, you find something. However, because it's RNG-based, you don't always find that. So stuff like the ability to have extra stores, I think, would have been really good. Uh, extra options in terms of, like, uh, uh, being able to go back up to previous biomes because you definitely do benefit from that a lot. Like, there's a huge benefit to going back up to the surface in Noita. It's just, it is hard to do so. Requires a very particular sort of build. And you can try and force that sort of thing by doing enough exploration, but there's also a lot of, well, if you didn't get a good wand right now, by the time you get to the jungle, for example, you're probably not going to have a good run. <laughs> you might as well restart sort of thing. Like, there's no, okay, well, I made sure that in the first level or something, hmm, what is this here? Ah, come on. Ah, all right, sure. We'll actually take that. There's no like, oh well in the first in the first area I I got the you know Oh I don't have a I, I totally forgot that I don't have a yeah. This is so annoying. Don't I don't have a shield equipped right now, I got rid of that. Okay, well, I'm down one potion charge, but that's fine. Oh I mean, not just alternate routes, but options for harder routes with greater rewards. I mean, stuff that, that rewards playing in a specific style, stuff that rewards... I, I, I think, like, you know, there's a bunch of different ways to end up doing it. Like I said, stuff that... Oh, man, I'm just going to use a second potion charge of this, right? This is absurd. Yeah, Not ideal, but that's fine. 
like I said, it's pretty much, I, I, I just think that what you should be thinking about at all points in time is how, how do I, how do I offset RNG in my game? If I have the worst RNG scenario, what can the, what does the player do? What can the player do? And that's stuff like, you know, in, oh, enemies did a very bad combination of attacks. Everybody's doing crits on you. Stuff like that, In for example, in Darkest Dungeon. And it's just like, well, that's why I got my Laudanum. That's why I got my Healing Salve. That's why I got, you know, some sort of emergency healing ability that will allow me to overcome that. Or allow me to overcome stress given from that. I took this, this, and this specifically for this scenario. You know, a bunch of stuff like that. Or, you know, it's like, oh, I can't find any damage ups in the entire game. Well, if you go for, well, like, you know, like I said, if you use the shrines and you take all the shrines getting blessings of damage in Undermine, then you're able to actually still stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with endgame enemies, even if everything you've gotten has been a a defensive item up to that point. Uh, then like, yeah, like I said, I, with Dead Cells, it's just like, okay, I'm going to go switch over to the harder routes. I'm going to start taking more cursed chests. I'm going to go over to the, like the, the fractured shrines to go and get legendary items. I'm going to really try and, and, and push to get a good wish item, for example. I'm going to take uh, Alienation and Acceptance and hope that that gives me a ton of extra healing in the next biome. Yeah, like YOLO, I think, is a good example of, of like, yeah, like the, you know, that's actually a good way to put it. BS prevention. Bullshit prevention is a good way to put exactly what I'm talking about. I have been rambling on quite a bit here because I'm just trying to formulate, because this is something that I have not thought of before, but yeah. Uh, Roguelite should have bullshit prevention. Roguelites should have bullshit prevention. And whether that is through skill, uh, pr like actual preparation, uh, is some sort of specific mechanic in the game, whether that's like, you know, knowledge based, planning based, there should be some sort of way to prevent bullshit in a, in a roguelite. That's, that's, that's the sort of thing that, you know, I was saying earlier that you should always feel like you know exactly why you messed up in this run. And that's because it's like, well, you didn't do the right bullshit prevention or you didn't take advantage of the right bullshit prevention. So you lost the run. <laughs> that sort of thing. It's like, you should always feel like, well, I knew I know exactly what I should have done. And the game did give me that option, but I decided not to. And now I'm dead. <laughs> Is Isaac a good roguelike for that metric? I think it does an okay job. I still think that there are like, like major, ma the, I, I, as much as I do like Binding of Isaac, I do think it is way too reliant on RNG and you can get absolutely, I mean, just go look at like a Northern Lion's famous train wreck episode of Binding of Isaac, where you had to rely on dry baby for most of the, most of the run. I feel like that is, I feel like that is a very good example of how things can go extremely wrong in the Binding of Isaac. There are some things, like I said, uh, you know, knowing about specific routes to take, uh, going, for example, in like alternate routes, the, uh, the, 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 uh, alternate exit path, for example, is a good way to get extra mystery items, you know, stuff like, uh, risking yourself in terms of of doing uh, the the sacrifice rooms and like the boss the boss item rooms, you know, like the boss challenge rooms. I still don't have. I still don't have the the. Uh, I forgot. I still don't have a shield. Yeah, like risking for for uh, uh, boss challenge rooms to get extra items is also another really good example of that. But there is also still a lot of RNG that you just can't do anything about. Yeah. Mitigating bad luck is one of those more, more modern roguelite afford, affordances. I don't know. I was just talking about how like NetHack has plenty of of uh, things that you can exploit if you really need to. Yeah, you know what? Get out of here, Mushroom Boy. Let's do this. 
Oh, hey, cases. We're talking about uh, roguelite design. <laughs> The stream is far too intellectual compared to the standard Firebird stream. Can we talk about Fast Car for five minutes? Absolutely. Apparently, there was a cover of Fast Car done by some sort of famous, uh, I don't know, uh, um, uh, country artist. I'm not familiar with them, but Fast Car is actually back in the public eye. Tracy Chapman's famous song, getting the recognition it deserves, if you were to ask me. Honestly, I'm happy to see that. It's a, it is a great track, no question. We continue to make Isaac contents. I mean, I've been actually been playing uh, Isaac on my own for a little bit. I've been doing uh, uh, some more of the the Fiend Folio specific stuff, like some of the the special challenges they have there. So I don't know if people want to see Isaac. I probably end up, I would probably end up doing it. Uh, maybe. <laughs> I'm not gonna say no, but I'm also not gonna say yes. Hey, see fish roll. We're talking about fast car. Do you got one? Is it fast enough to take you away from here? These are the questions that I ask of you. Okay, please get rid of this curse. Ah. Hey, 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 hey. Let me tell you, I'm people, and I want to see Isaac. That's true. You are people. You know, I'm considering it right now. Yeah, let me let me, let me take a look. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep, you are people. Uh, yeah, but it's like at the same time too. I don't know. It's I've, I've been doing like a darkest dungeon too lately. I got so many other Oh boy, uh, let's get a slam And welcome to the jam. Okay, there we go And now I don't have to worry about having about dying to curse at for now all Right, 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 all right let's then you know it, you too. Yeah, I don't want to deal with this at all. Oy. Ugh, ugh. Yeah, it's like I could definitely do some more Isaac. Yeah, Fiend Folio has been a a very good way to get a lot of extra extra stuff out of there. I was fine as moving back to Isaac. And despite watching 10 Isaac streams, I still have no idea what's going on in them. Man, maybe... Oh, oh come on. We, I mean, it's good, but it's also like, oh, you, this is hard. Oh, and it's also a machete and pistol, which is a pretty fun item. <laughs> if only I got the legendary version of it down. That is a good thing to use Wish on. Uh, I don't think it's better than the, the sadistic stiletto, so I'm just going to sell that one and take this. All right, but yeah, I got like Darkest Dungeon 2 that I'm doing. I got a whole bunch of I have been like not on the not on the the content train for a bit I got to get back to that and everything Ah, Yeah, fine Okay, yeah, of course the annoying thing here is going to be ugh, ugh. Thought I was gonna be able to hit it off the edge But then again as soon as I realized that I uh, did make the mistake of trying to root that enemy that that wasn't going to work oh come on it's like this is a decent run but i gotta like by the way no i still haven't found the shop otherwise kind of surprising but here we are okay 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 uh isaac has a misfortune being like one of the first yeah like one of the first of that sort of specific style zelda combined with nethack and it's like, you can see it. You can see it, but it is also... All right, all right, you know what? I really just, like, I, ah! Okay, got rid of that at least. I'm not gonna die yet. Man, you know, I, I took like a what doesn't kill me and everything and I just have not found a shield yet. It's kind of absurd. Oh. <sighs> Oh, I mean, I know exactly what I'm doing in... <laughs> nah. Nah, 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 nah. Although that would be a good combination with this, uh, with this particular weapon. Nah, 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 Oh, I know exactly what I'm doing in Binding of Isaac, though, let me tell you. That doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, I'm going to be able to do it well. 
Yeah, I, I know the card allows me to skip open wounds, which is why I was considering taking it, but I like the current combination of items that I have right now otherwise, so... Didn't really want to grab that one out right now. Besides, I didn't really have anything specific that I wanted for mutations right now anyway, so... Eh, eh, it's fine. But anyway... I better do this, make sure I don't die. And then hope that I can get enough money to get the rush of stuff here otherwise. Obviously another thing that I'm looking for is uh, grabbing out a plus 100% sort of lifesteal affix thing if I could. Because that will go down real smooth right now, let me tell you. But we'll see if that even happens here. Oh, oh I got a cough again. Still slightly, slightly sick. Okay. What are we looking at? Got any shields just kind of hanging around? No, of course not. All right, fine, fine, fine. Well, we don't have to do that right now. We'll just continue on at the pace I'm doing this. I will also take that, though. I'm not going to turn down food at this point in time, given that I'm already kind of light on the old. Given that I'm already kind of light on the old, uh, oh boy, oh boy, yeah, the uh, uh, thing. But yeah, the I Binding of Isaac definitely does have a... Ah, the shield bearer almost destroyed me there. Hey. Yeah, I'm okay, though. Making this frustrating to deal with right now. Now, the real thing I'm worried about is actually running into that thorny, so... Probably, yeah. Go take care of it as best I can right now. Do that sort of thing, do this sort of thing. Still don't have a shield, so gotta watch out for that! Oh boy, that was close. Okay. Let's see if I can get on the, the stompy platform. There you go, perfect. That's what I was looking for. All right, but uh, yeah. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Well, I'm getting really lucky with the uh, with the challenge rifts, though. This is like, is that almost every single area I've gone to that I've gotten a challenge rift? Wow, it's uh, some good luck. It's too bad this is not like a very you know special run or anything like that. It's just kind of hey, you know, casual run, whatever. Oh, ah, of course. Somehow blessed run. Yeah, I'm surprised nobody's tried to make the wager just yet. That I established in the previous stream. I think I got a pretty good shot at this one, though. We got, like, a nice fast weapon. It's, 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 it's as fast as a car. It goes so fast it makes enemies feel like they're drunk, which is why they get poisoned. And then I get the, the critical damage. Uh, and then, um, you know, otherwise... It's like, yeah, I'm having a little bit of trouble getting all of the potion charges that I want here. But aside from that, it's looking good. I was tempted. Ah, you can't. I mean, it's like your wait and see mentality is ruining the spirit of the wager. It's supposed to be a risky thing. It's like there were plenty of times that I easily could have died there. Think about it. Oh, man. Oh, thank you. Mushroom Boy coming in in the clutch. Yeah. Okay, okay. And then right over here. There we go. I, I said, there we go. <laughs> yes. Hey, is there any possible way I could get enough money for... I don't think I'm going to be able to get both the, the potion charges. It does not seem like it's going to work. Okay, got rid of you, got rid of you. We still got two, two, uh, 
items here. See if maybe selling them might be able to be enough. 650, nah. It's gonna be close. It would be close, but it's not actually gonna be enough to do it. So I'm just gonna, eh, whatever. Man, I tell ya. But yeah, long rambling conversation aside, basically the short version is that it's like, I, I feel like roguelites are, roguelikes and, and roguelites are at their best when you, when you know exactly where you went wrong in the run. And to do that, you gotta have a good level of bullshit prevention. If you don't have a good level of bullshit prevention, then, you know, ultimately you, you just sort of feel like you're at the, the mercy of RNG. And whether that is, you know, preparation, uh, something that requires, you know, extra skill to be able to get the most out of, something that, uh, you know, requires, like, intimate knowledge of the game and how to exploit it to the best uh, of your ability. Whatever it happens to be, it's just got to be something that will let, it, let you mitigate to the random number generator and come out on top. What's your opinion on deck builder role, Glex? I mean, obviously, there's a very good example of that, whether it's uh, knowing what sort of build that you want to create. Ah! Knowing what sort of build that you want to create, um, buying the right cards, taking risks when it matters, all that sort of stuff. So I think that's a pretty good example of a lot of that sort of thing. And it's no surprise. I mean, card games have been around for, for millennia, and it's just like people have, have honed that sort of thing to an absolute science. How, what do I, uh, what do I, what is my opinion specifically of, like, uh, the roguelike, uh, uh, card games? I like them well enough. It's not, like, my favorite sort of genre, but, uh, it's alright. I got no issue with it. Played a good amount of, like, Slay the Spire and, and similar stuff. Ah! Uh, any other non-action roguelikes you enjoy? Ah! Yeah, like, NetHack is my favorite game of all time. I love, I love that game. Also, I had a lot of fun playing, I'm not gonna get the perfect fight, but that's fine. Also, I love playing, like, uh, uh, I mean, here, let me, let me go take a real quick, uh, real quick look at my, my, like, uh, list of completed games that I got right now. Uh, for, for other games like that. Yeah, like, Binding of Isaac, a very good game. Uh, that's more of a twin-stick shooter than it's really action, but it is, it is still obviously action. Cogmind was great. I love, 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 love Cogmind. That game is very good. Concrete Jungle is another deck builder type of thing. Uh, Crypt the Necrodancer that wasn't really a huge fan of. I don't like, I don't like games that ask me to listen to things. Uh, uh, Cult of the Lamb, Curse of the Dead Gods, more action. Uh, Darkest Dungeon. Oh, yeah, I, I play Darkest Dungeon. I love Darkest Dungeon. Darkest Dungeon's great. It is, uh, I, I do think that it is pretty easy to kind of solve the game. But, uh, otherwise, I still had a lot of fun with it, but I also do like kind of grindy games. Uh, Death Road to Canada is a bit more of a... Uh, that's a bit closer to like a, a, I don't know, um, uh, it's like Oregon Trail <laughs> in its, and it does have some action sequences stuff, but that's more of an Oregon Trail type of thing, which I really enjoyed. Uh, Dung Great is platformer, that one is good, but also more action. And the Gungeon, uh, same thing as Binding of Isaac, more of a twin stick shooter. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, Gloom, again, that's more of a side-scroller. Not really much to say there. Uh, Graveyard Keep is not really a rogue. Like, that's more of a sim game. I mean, unless you consider, like, Stardew Valley to be that. Hades, same thing. That's, that's action. Uh, Inscription was a lot of fun. Liked Inscription a lot. But, I mean, you know, I also am a big fan of of lateral puzzles in video games, which is why I like the whole ARG stuff, even though ultimately it's kind of stupid. Uh, Invisible Ink. Invisible Ink is, it was really good. Uh, really stressful, but also very good. I really like that game. Uh, randomized, sort of a, a turn-based strategy. 
And that's, again, another one of those games where it's like preparation and understanding of your your enemies and how to exploit them was was a huge part of like the, the bullshit prevention in that. Uh, what else? What else? Loot River. I really like the... Oh, they still haven't gotten any new updates. Ah. Loot River, I really like the uh, the the sort of uh, funky, puzzly type of aspects moving around the map. But again, that's more of a action game, Moonlighter action game, Noita action platformer game. Uh, One Step from Eden, really good. Still a card builder that is more of an action game. Uh, what else? What else? Puss? What do you consider Puss to be that? I don't know. <laughs> what do you consider Rain World to be that? Rain World I wasn't a huge fan of, though, but do I, though I do recognize why it's very good. <laughs> uh, Risk of Rain is a shooter, but also eh, Rogue Legacy, Rogue Legacy 2, again, platformer. Secrets of Grindia, action, again, and that's only one, one mode. Slay the Spire, I already talked about. Uh... What else? What else? Tower Climb, really good game. Really, really good game. Highly recommend that. However, again, action. Yeah, I haven't played a whole ton of like uh, non action y sort of roguelikes. It's like, uh, so. I mean, I really, really enjoyed uh, playing, you know, uh, some of those games like Invisible Ink. Well, Invisible Ink, I had fun, but it's like, I don't know if I would go back to that. It's very hard to do. I I feel like I barely grasped enough of the game to be able to to just get a basic win on it. Uh, like, uh, you, you know, card game roguelikes, obviously. Cogmind is really good. That's a... That's a uh, Cogmind is very good. Very, very good. Would highly recommend that one. But again, it's like that is a traditional roguelike. That is a that is a roguelike roguelike. <laughs> but I still really I still really enjoyed it. Enjoyed really it, it's 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 a real uh, weird tough game in that way. One you played a lot was Baba is You. Yeah, Baba is You is great, but that's not really a roguelike. That's just a puzzle game. <laughs> When I played both uh, Baba is You, uh, the base game, and the the new adventures, that's a that's a good high quality puzzle game, <laughs> no doubt. But like, yeah, I've also played uh, a few different puzzle games in that way. There's also The Witness, for example, and uh, Patrick's Parabox, two good ones. Yeah, like I said, Inscription, also a lot of fun, and then it did have the, the Casey's Mod mode, which I think was... Was... I, I which I still... You know, I, I I did Skullstorm in that. I did, like, the, the hardest version of that possible. feel like I have beaten it thoroughly and completely. <laughs> ah. But again, that's, that's my love of lateral difficult puzzles coming through more than more than like the the uh, huge love of deck builder stuff because yeah although the deck builder is a huge part of that game it is also uh well you 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 saw the daniel mullins experience <laughs> you know you know that those games are a lot more than just like ah it's just a straight deck builder sort of game there's there's more stuff going on that makes them really that makes them special. The same way that like the hex wasn't just a the hex wasn't just a, a a visual novel type of thing. And it's just like that's normal for visual novels to be like weird and meta. 13 Sentinels. Uh but it's like that took it even to a weird different degree which I really thought was fun. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much, uh, it's the, that's the long version of that. I would definitely be open to playing more, like, actual term... Oh, yeah, Tangle Deep! I forgot about Tangle Deep. I also played Tangle Deep. T Tangle Deep is very good. Uh, wasn't my favorite of the traditional roguelikes. I feel like it was a little bit, a little bit easier than most, but I still had a good time playing it, and I still, you know, obviously beat the game thoroughly, so... 
meta thing is showing his cat. One of those things that's just absolutely absurd because it was originally meant to highlight the absurdity of its existence, even though it is somehow in pop culture become a very popular thing despite that. Should have called it like the poop pee pee poo poo uh, uh, cat. Then people wouldn't be like, oh yes, this is the perfect example of quantum mechanics. <laughs> Ah! Show dingers pee pee poo poo. You wouldn't. You wouldn't say. You wouldn't always bring that up in every single. In every single. Oh, I'll take that. Uh, wouldn't bring that up in every single uh, piece of media. It was called that, right? Okay, we good. We good. There we go. Oh. When I stopped watching the series, you seemed to hate the game. I actually came around on it uh, pretty well. Yeah, it is. Okay, I'll admit. I'll admit. Uh, Tangle Deep, kind of generic, but I ended. I, I just like traditional roguelikes a lot too. And you know, there's there's a lot of stuff going on in it. It was fun. I feel like it's also one of those smaller, overlooked games that always gets kind of a, kind of a, uh, an extra bump up in my opinion too. You know me. I'm uh I'm 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 one of those I'm one of those like art house critic types where it's just like oh it's a small game I gotta like it more now ooh yeah <laughs> it's good it's good right yeah the uh, legendary version explode again after a brief moment so you get two hands that translates into two hands we get the uh, we get the the, uh, the, the the boss remix version of the giant out here. Ah, he's the hands of a government man. So oiled. Okay, there we go. Uh, has some depth. Uh, builds can get crazy. Yeah, there are a lot of builds that I didn't really explore. What did I usually go for with that? Was it a? Uh, was it like the summon build? I don't even remember what I did specifically in. No, 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 no! It was just the standard, uh, standard thief build. Cause Mirai is a thief in the game. Like that's kind of her thing. I know it's like you can have different backstories, but that's the base one, which is why I decide to go with it. <laughs> also, ah. Add to cough there. Oh man. Hello, Mr. Bird. Since last time I've gotten two jobs, lived in two apartments, and I've gotten to university. How have things been since then? Man, has it really been that long? Jeez. I mean, I know I haven't been streaming that much, but... Wow. <laughs> have I really not been streaming that much? Oi. Doing it more now. Alright, but, uh... Grab that real quick. And see where this is going. But hey, good to hear! I mean, for me, it's just been eh, more or less the same. I got a new job too. Talk about fast car ad nauseum for a very long time. You got a new job. Are you kidding me? I don't know if I really want to take this. I'm, I'm going to do it. Let's have some fun. <laughs> Speaking of risk reward in video games. What do you think of... of uh, oh yeah, also, uh, Doc starts out most of his games feeling a little cool on them. Like they got to prove themselves. Uh, yeah. That's actually, like I said, it's just like, you get a bump up in my mind if you're like a small indie game, and then you get a bump down in my mind if you're like a big, a big game. It's super unfair, I'll admit. But like, you know, what can I say? I like, I like, I like, I like the smaller games. I like the, I like the underdog in that way. Unless you're Luigi or Waluigi, then I hate you. But like, you know, I did it. I did it. What do you think of non-puzzle games that can be solved? Like with every situation, every boss battle is a puzzle. Uh, I mean, that's sort of like how a lot of turn-based RPGs work, ultimately. You got to figure out like the right mix of... Uh, are you talking about like the uh, Darkest Dungeon, for example? The major thing I would say with Darkest Dungeon that was kind of like a, a minus in my mind was the fact that the game went on for a very long time. <laughs> like, it was, it's a very grindy game, even after you figure out kind of how to approach everything in it. Like, it's, uh, it's a game that 
you know, when it's fresh, it's still pretty good. But then once you kind of like get it, you get it. But then there's still like 40 more game hours of game to go. <laughs> so it's uh, I like games like that. Obviously, a lot of uh, a lot of card games, you can get a similar sort of thing where it's like you understand what the builds are. You understand how to approach every individual situation, etc. And so on, blah, blah, blah. But I think that it's like, yeah, with a game like that, what you got to do is you got to really space out, like, how much content do you have in the game and or how original do the mechanics get? Like, how, how exactly, how do you overcome people being able to solve your game, your game? Because there are gimmicks, you know, you see a lot of like super gimmicky boss fights or whatever in games. Like usually if you have a, a, a turn-based sort of card game style thing, then it's just like, you know, major encounters, major enemies have some sort of weird gimmick associated with them. How well does that work? How gimmicky is it? Is it good for a lot of different fights? Is it good for a single fight? Think about like Ascension in... Ah! Think about like Ascension in Slay the Spire. That can really change up how you end up playing the game and shuts down a lot of, I, I tried to kill Mushroom Boy. I'm sorry, Mushroom Boy. And can really shut down a lot of uh, basic build types that can work on a lower level difficulty. Well, that's, you know, true for a lot of sort of difficulty like that. After you get enough skill when it comes to doing things, kind of ramping up the difficulty is just the usual thing. I mean, I think that's just, you know, ultimately, uh, it's the same way that any sort of game is going to deal with it. As you get better at the game, whether it's solvable through, you know, just having enough uh, stats, for example, you know, grinding out enough materials, whether it's solvable just by figuring out the solution to having a build, whether it's solvable just by you getting good enough at the game. It's like, what do you do to keep the game fresh past that point? And that is, you know, it's it's always on a, a very per game basis how how difficulty gets gets done like that. Are you just going to increase the amount of uh, damage that everything does and can take? Are you going to, you know, come up with increasingly gimmicky encounters? Are you going to try and come up with some sort of lateral difficulty, like five cell mode, like the ascension difficulty and stuff? You know, that sort of thing. <laughs> but yeah, also just take a look. Uh, still stuck in Russia. They're ramping up the anti-trans laws there. I know, right? I've been seeing that. Oh, still got to get out of there ASAP. Find our friends out on how to get our entire polycule out there to Spain, but it might take a while. Good luck with that. I know you were looking at that uh, last with your job. Uh, with the recent like round of 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 like d d d d the drafting recruitment type of stuff, but it's just like uh, I know that it's like it, it's never as easy as just like ah just you know go move somewhere else forehead right. <laughs> so hope it hope it goes well because it is it is it's rough. It, it is as always rough. <sighs> but you know hey it sounds like you at least got a plan so. See how that goes. All right. As a dev, I like games with uh, with little content. I mean, I think it's important to not focus too hard on on cramming, you know, as much content as possible into your game, unless you want to be like Persona Five. Do you want to be like Persona Five, where the most important thing in the game was making it 100 hours long? <laughs> because you can do that. There's a lot of people who are huge fans of just a game with a long, a long runtime. I don't know if I necessarily would say that. <laughs> Dang, we're still talking about Persona this far along. We, we never ta stop talking about Persona. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make like Persona references until I die, or like, you know, the the, the channel ends or something like that. Like I'm forced to retire or something like that because I just, I, I, my hands disintegrated into nubs and I can't play video games anymore. Now nah, I'll get eye tracking by then. Uh, <laughs> 
And then it's just like I will play video games just by looking at them hard enough. <laughs> and I'll still be complaining about Persona 5! Uh, trust you me! <laughs> but anyway, ah, okay, okay, okay. So many of these guys here, even multiple on the same thing. The Persona metric. I spent a long time on Persona. <laughs> Never forget the amount of time that I Personaed. Uh, okay, you know what? I will take that, uh, just purely for the, the extra healing. God, can I get a different shield, though? I have so much money, and yet... Like, I just want another shield. <laughs> Are study streams still a thing? Uh, I could do them. I don't know how much interest people would actually have. I am trying to stream more, though. That would be a good, like, you know, filler bit at the end of a stream if I really have nothing else left to do. <laughs> but we can still do, like, Hitman right now, or Darkest Dungeon 2. Rumors that they're trying to re- They've had rumors that they've been trying to remake Final Fantasy IX for a while. I think that game could really stand- Look, there's good stuff in Final Fantasy IX. I didn't really like the game, but if they remade it, I think it could be better than the original. I'd be down, is what I'm trying to say. That's a- That is a- That I think is a good opportunity for a game remake. Where it's just like- it's, uh, it's all right. It's got some good stuff. Could really use a little bit of polish if they wanted to do that. I think that is, that's a good idea overall. I don't know which one was, uh, that's with the horny monkey man and Vivi, uh, everybody's favorite character. Deservedly so. And also the one where everybody was extremely forgiving of war crimes. <laughs> Like boy, they 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 got on they got on Beatrix's side really easily after she committed all of those war crimes. <laughs> Which I always think is one of the most absurd things in that game. Yo, she committed a lot of war crimes, but then she did say, "Oh, but uh, you know what? I'm not actually gonna kill Dagger, so it's fine." And I'm just like, "Are you kidding me?" <laughs> Uh, they always forgive war crimes in Final Fantasy. I mean, what about what about uh, 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 the one guy that I can't remember the name of from Final Fantasy Twelve? You remember him? <laughs> no, not Kefka. <laughs> Kefka went to jail. Also, what are you talking about? They forgave Kefka's war crimes. He was in jail. <laughs> yes, I know it was a ruse, but still, Franz Kafka. <laughs> Franz Kafka does not appear in any Final Fantasy game. You're literally a terrorist in 7. Yeah, that is true. Oh, man. Want to try and get, like, into the 7 stuff? <laughs> I'd hate to see Steiner remade as a realistic model in Final Fantasy 16. I, I like Steiner, but it's just like, boy, he's super dumb. Like, there, there is always that thing where it's like, your queen, I, throughout the entire game, Braun never did never did anything that was like good or laudable in any way and yet everybody treated her as just like oh no but we love our queen it's like wouldn't it have killed them to at least have put in a couple scenes where she wasn't just a total piece of garbage <laughs> see you don't want persona we can go off on final fantasy 9 <laughs> i'll do both <laughs> You want to do a, you want to do the bits on Final Fantasy or uh, on Final Fantasy? You want to do the bits on um uh uh, 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 uh why can I not remember it? Uh, uh, Thirteen Sentinels now. Yeah. No perfect fight here. I feel like I could have done that too. Oh come on! There we go. I love the Persona bits. I can I can continue to talk about Persona bits forever. I mean, you, you gotta remember, I'm still in the background doing uh, the transcription stuff and, like, posting them up on the videos. Talk about that occasionally. So that is still currently happening. <laughs> Quit swinging around after you're dead. Oh, 
I mean, not everybody is a terrorist in Final Fantasy. Like, Final Fantasy X, everybody's totally cool. And they're all working towards a goal, a very laudable goal. I mean, unless you like Jacked. Which... Why? Why? Why would you... Why... Why would you like that guy? <laughs> I'm on... I'm on Tita's side with that. <laughs> He's hot? That's... That is not good enough. So is Beatrix. <laughs> I, I I refuse to I refuse to like somebody based on the fact that they they are super ripped. <laughs> Isn't that a war crime? <laughs> liking somebody based on their liking somebody based on their body? No. I mean, at most, it's shallow. <laughs> Unless you're talking about. Is he so ripped it's a war crime? <laughs> no, I don't think... I don't think uh, Yevon is going to be like, this. Arrest this man for heresy. He's too hot. <laughs> the, the, the Catholic Church has put a bounty on this man's head. He's too attractive. <laughs> Though, wouldn't that be... Wouldn't that be a life goal? All right. <sighs> yeah, that's true. He's not really dad bod. He is. A, he is a sexy dad. He is. He does not have a dad bod. He's got like. He's got like an athlete's body. He's like a. He, he's. He's a pro blitzball player uh, body. Ah. Slash giant um, uh, eldritch whale. You know, whichever one you want to look at him. I don't know. Maybe you're into the, maybe you're into the Eldritch Whale. I'm not. <laughs> Can't say, you know, that uh, leaves horrible spawn that kills everybody anywhere he goes. Not my thing. <laughs> Have you played Diablo 4? Nah, I haven't played any Diablo aside from 3. And uh, it was all right. I had fun. I just played through like the campaign once though, so didn't really get too deep into it. Nah, I don't I, like I like a grind game. I feel like that's a bit too grindy for me. Also multiplayer aspect, so you know. As always, that is a that's one of those deal breakers for me. For that entire thing. Can't believe y'all didn't want to do the wager on this one. I could have easily banned a game. <laughs> Unless things go horribly wrong. I don't know. You don't know. I don't know. Maybe they still would. Nah, okay. Nobody made the wager. There's nothing to be said about that. Eh. <laughs> would have done it, though. All right, take it down, though. What happened with wagers? Oh, this is the thing that I started as of the last stream. Uh, basically, you can bet if I'm going to win a run or not and get a free game for me to play. But if I win the game, uh, then it's banned forever. <laughs> and when I say that I'll play the game, I mean I will start it today. I don't know. I came up with it, like I said, as I was coming home from work yesterday, and I'm just like, ah, oh, that'd be funny. Uh, but it's just like, yeah, nobody's taking me up on it just yet. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> uh, Unaleska and some government officials. Uh, that's pretty much terrorism from the state's viewpoint. Well, yeah, I look like Unaleska, but Unaleska is not a protagonist. She is pretty explicitly antagonistic in the game. <laughs> and it's like, it is a theocracy. Yeah, I'm gonna blow this real quick. There you go. Oh, I will wager solitaire. You can't do that. Na oh, whoops. Well, explode mushroom boy. He'll be back. Don't worry. Uh, you can't wager now. We're a bit too late into the run. You got to do that early in the run. Uh, also, solitaire. Feel like. I feel you can't just choose things that you don't care about. Uh, uh, uh. 
it has to like look here's the thing it's like if you sacrifice something that you don't care about then it's not really a sacrifice now is it that's like ah, i will sacrifice my bag of trash <laughs> it's like no no it's gotta be something of worth to you <laughs> You know how sacro you know how wagers work, right? <laughs> you you bet things that have value. Ah, <laughs> uh, save point. Oh. Like you don't bet things that don't have value, then you're just playing for fun. It's not a wager. It's just for fun. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, hey, oh hey, hey, come on. But think how funny Solitar would be. Would it? <laughs> I want you to imagine right now me playing Solitaire. Don't you remember when everyone was playing Minesweeper a little while back? Same thing. Yeah. I'm just gonna keep going for the the parries here at this rate, bro, bro. It's fine. <sighs> Final Fantasy 16, you're also a terrorist, thinking about it. Well, not really terrorist, but outlaw. I mean, yeah, it's not as bad. I guess I would probably say it's just like if you rob a bank versus uh, kill people to terrorize governments. <laughs> There's That's more respectable. <laughs> All right, all right, all right, all right. Enough of that. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Whenever I say, out, whenever they say outlaw, I cringe a bit. Why are you crongoing at the word outlaw? Didn't you like Hypnospace Outlaw? That game's great. They also got a sequel coming out soon. And there's also Terminal X, which is a video game. <laughs> which definitely seems fun. But, like, I don't think I'm going to end up playing it. Right, there we go. Oh, also, just give me one second. Still coughing a lot here. Oi. I mean, from our actions, things get worse uh, before they get better. Yeah, it sounds about right. Hero's journey and all that. <laughs> Where is the food shop on this floor? Man, Dracul's castle so huge. Yeah, Dracula just shows up, says hi, and annoys me, and then leaves. Turns on Vertigo from from uh, 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 Rogue Legacy, which they which the cowards got rid of, as we all know. Oh, bat! Unless there's a very good synergy with that, though. I think I'm probably still gonna stick with this. Okay, there we go. Yeah, nah. Oh, <sighs> hmm. I'm probably not going to get enough fragments to be able to do anything, but eh, take it anyway, right? All right. Is the terrorism that by... Oh, it's terrorism, but by our actions. Okay. So when you say... So it's just like outlaw is just... A, another word, another way to say nothing left to lose. Okay. But also terrorist. <laughs> Why did... Why does Final Fantasy like terrorism so much? <laughs> just a just quick observation there. Why are they so into terrorism? Uh, okay, here we go. All right, because they don't like the government. I see. I see. All right, all right, all right, there we go. Or God, or both. I mean, sometimes they're the same thing. <laughs> in fact, I would say in a lot of these games, they're the same thing. <laughs> You're really gonna tell me Zenith wasn't pretty much the president? <laughs> ah, it's good stuff. Anyway, oh, here it is, wow. What a what an out of the way place to put the food shop. All right, send that in. There we go. 
Is anything that leads to sudden societal change is probably related to terrorism uh, to someone before succeeding. Eh, I think it just comes down to warring kingdoms. Always doing the warring kingdoms. By the way, is it warring kingdoms in Final Fantasy 16? I'm just curious. Uh, you should force second guy to play Dead Cells. I've done it before. <laughs> it's like he has done that. He actually had a really good run with a legendary... Uh, Legendary broadsword back in the day, but that was a long, long time ago at this point. As of right now, he's in, on vacation, so I can't even get in touch with him, so, you know. There are a lot of warring kingdoms, but there's no really, not really a good kingdom. They're all shitheads. Yeah, that's what you say. There's one very clear good kingdom. I mean, whether you're part of it or not is a real question. There we go. Good kingdom gets conquered at the very beginning. Yeah, I bet. In fact, that's all it's about. Every time, get them every time. Do they have the? Uh, do they have the, the uh, the one scientist guy that is the actual villain? Yeah, there we go. The one scientist guy who is the actual villain and the uh, the godlike entity, or like power that uh, is the thing that allows the plot to exist in the first place. We got all that. <laughs> Are they are they crossing off all of the they're crossing off all of the uh the checkboxes for a Final Fantasy game? Oh the the real villain the uh exploitation of some sort of godlike power by the, the evil kingdom or evil kingdoms in this case it sounds like not a scientist though okay so is it is it closer to like a it, yeah it's like is it a is it closer to like a uh a, a, a kafka who it's just like you know not really a scientist but you know still has that sort of exp like evil experimentation bent or is it closer to something like a uh a kuja who is, he's not really a scientist, but obviously he does do a lot of evil experimentation. Evil king, evil guy is a king willingly working with the evil god this time. Yeah, but is there the second character who's going to turn out to actually be the <laughs> I played a few different Final Fantasy games in my time, everybody. <laughs> Do they got the Sephiroth? Do they got the Kuja? Do they got the Kafka? Do they got the Sid? Do they got the... <laughs> they got the Hojo? Do they got the... Uh, I mean, the Hojo and Sephiroth are kind of all, both in the same game, I suppose, but... I mean, yeah, well, they got Sid. I'm talking about Sid in Final Fantasy XII. Sid in Final Fantasy XII is a very specific sort of Sid. <laughs> he's, not the, he's not like Sid in most of the other games. <laughs> That is specifically Final Fantasy XII, Sid. <laughs> He's not like all the other Sids. But yeah, it's like you got like the Kuja versus the Garland. You got the Sid versus the uh, guy that I can't remember the name of who turned into a big buff dude by the end of Final Fantasy XII. The Kafka versus the... Uh, G G it's not Gulkaska, but that's the first name that came to my head. What was the, what was the Emperor's name in Final Fantasy VI? Final Fantasy Sid, 16 Sid is hot. So it's Final Fantasy 12 Sid, but he was also super evil. Oh my God, please. <laughs> it is a very different way of playing the game with Richter here. All right, anyway, continuing on. They've sworn off multiplayer games with Final Fantasy 14. Has some really good villains. If you're missing out on, uh, you're missing out on by Final Fantasy villain standards. Yeah, but I think the Final Fantasy villain standards are hokey. Unless they turn into a big buff guy, then I like that. <laughs> it's not the only metric by which I judge villainry, but it is, I think, an important one. That health gets, keeps getting closer to Solitar. No, it doesn't. We. Is like the biggest good that is out there. Yeah, okay. I mean, they they, they kind of switch back and forth between it. Like Final Fantasy VI, uh, 15 
He was just a he was a mechanic. <laughs> it's like wasn't really too much. Uh, he had you know obviously an important role in the story, but it wasn't like super huge or anything. Right. Okay. Then uh, so, but it. It's like, is he biggest in, in terms of, like, most powerful? Is he, like, Thunder God Sid from, uh, from Tactics? Who is literally the most power, like, the most powerful unit that you can get? Well, uh, barring extreme exploitation sort of stuff. Literally, yes. <laughs> okay, so we do have... So we got a return of Thunder God Sid. He is lit... Oh! Oh, it is... Oh, they... Oh, they're making an explicit reference! to Final Fantasy Tactics. I didn't realize that. <laughs> I didn't really expect that sort of thing. Interesting. Oh, he's Rama. <laughs> Who, again, is also a character that usually appears in those games. You remember he had, like, a huge role back in... He had a huge role back in uh, uh, da -da 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 -da, Final Fantasy VI and everything, rescuing Terra and whatnot, but, like... Combining the two characters is weird. There we go. Go. By the way, Final, Final Fantasy 16 got a garland. Because, like, uh, 16 has a ton of Ivalis references. Interesting. So, what did we get anything for Final Fantasy 12? Just curious, because I know that's... That that and Final Fantasy Tactics are the two that I'm most familiar with. When it comes to the Ivalis saga. That's a very particular reference to do, though. Kind of surprises me. Because, like, Tactics, I know, is well-regarded, but, like, is it really that well-regarded? People still really into the Final Fantasy Tic Tacs of these days? I'm just saying. Tons of terrorism. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> that's every Final Fantasy game. We just established that. We just established that. Okay, there we go. Leader of the anti-government action that rescues slaves and does terrorism. Yeah, sort of like a Final Fantasy VI again. I want more health. Oh, here we go. Perfect. Yeah, I really probably should be looking in these areas if I want to see... Okay. Uh, if I want to see if I can get uh, stuff... Well, okay. Here we go, baby. Got the skill here, too. And it's a legendary one, which is, as we've seen before, the legendary rebound stone is really good. <laughs> Your terrorists are our freedom fighters, literally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you say. Anyway. Good, good. Got the, uh... Got the sort of, um, uh, uh, what's the word I'm trying to think of? I'm actually full? Huh. All right, I see. Oh, come on. No, no. Uh, please, please, please. Ah. Uh. Hey, come on. Okay, come on. Perfect. Thank you, Rebound Stone. As always, coming through in the clutch, baby. Ugh. All right. Well, that covers Richter mode. The Hitman series has made it all vague. Geopolitical terms sound even dumber. <laughs> I mean... I got the Richter outfit then. Now, I do believe I missed uh, something in that one, though. Because I was supposed to get a new item, right? Did I get that unlocked? Or do I need to also... 
Well, like, yeah, Hitman, uh, Freedom Fighters. We all remember that. That, if you don't remember, true believers, uh, in the Hitman series, look for the episode Freedom Fighters. Uh, that is in Colorado. Maybe one of the most despised missions in the entirety of the series. <laughs> One and three? I mean, uh, like, yeah, Final Fantasy X I was talking about earlier, which, I mean, you could probably spin that, but, like, yeah. What? Why? Uh, a few different things. Uh, there are four different targets. It's a big, flat area. Everybody is hostile to you right off the bat. Um, yeah, there's not, like, a whole lot of... Just, just, just a bunch of different stuff like that. There's, it's, it's, a, it's a rough, it's a rough uh, place to do stuff, and it, it just makes it hard to, especially if you're doing like the freelancer mode. From what I understand, it is just really obnoxious. But yeah, like big flat area. There are two large buildings, a barn house and a farmhouse. And that's pretty much it. Everybody is a militia member, so they're instantly hostile to you if you're not wearing like a, a good costume. And they're they are they are, you know, like all wielding guns. <laughs> so yeah, d there's not really even all that much you can do about it. If you get caught, you are gonna be shot by everybody. <laughs> it's like it's just very easy to have everybody see you all across the map. Um yeah. Stupid. Yeah, Colorado got a new wave of hatred in the free freelancer mode. Yep, I, I thought so. I thought that was pretty much the big reason why, <laughs> because it's just like that is that is a very rough one to. Uh, it's a very rough one to play, I would think, in specifically the uh, the freelancer mode more than anything else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ah! Ah! Bats! Oh. Dracula, come on. Don't suck my blood, Dracula. Oh, no, Dracula. Don't suck my blood, Uwu. There we go. <laughs> and taken down. Oh, enough talk. Have at you. As you do. Oh, wait, no, uh, not that one. Well, I mean, I don't really need it or anything. Oh, you know, uh, nah, I'm not going to be able to use it super well. Love the punch. <laughs> this punch is going pretty good, isn't it? Uh, IOILX play with maps a, a lot in experiment. Colorado is IOILX fuck it. Give everyone guns phase. Which it's like, I was, I'm going for, of course, uh, the, the, uh, uh, Silent Assassin every time, so, like, eh, didn't bother me. Yeah, okay. It's like, do your thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Accidentally exploded Mushroom Boy again, by the way. Sorry. Sorry, Mushroom Boy. It's my bad. Ah! Couldn't quite get up on edge guarding too hard there. It's so abrupt. Punch is like seriously top tier weapon, especially if you have one that just literally does two hits at no cost. Oh my god! Why did that? Why are there so? Why are there still more things coming in? Okay, all right. Allow me to get my platforms back, if you would please. And right in there. Can't believe nobody wanted to do a... Ah, ah, okay. Can't believe nobody wanted to do a wager on this one. Come on, guys. <laughs> ah. Some good stuff. Some good stuff. Some law of the lines, you can't fix the system uh, using the means of the system. Ugh. Man, I don't know. 
Stiletto still good? Oh yeah. Is Solitar banned now? No. <laughs> you 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 called that one in way too late. <laughs> you gotta do that earlier in the run. You already playing my favorite game. It's a good game. Yeah, it's like you can't say like Dead Cells. I've already played this game plenty of times, so it's kind of not really available to be said in the first place. But also, it's just like, I, I do retain the ability to say no. <laughs> All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. Now, do I get the unlock for... No. Okay. I got to go do the... Ah. Left-wing radical. It's like, oh, the only revolutionaries we got around here are right-wing radicals. <laughs> remember the remember, remember the January 6th thing? Ugh. Man, that is so, that's the first thing I think of when I think of, like, oh, let's see the new outfit. Like, revolutionary stuff. At least as of recent. Oy. And there's the most political. That's the most political you're ever going to see me on stream. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> you're not getting any more than that. Dr. Inferno Firebird anti-insurrectionist. There you go. That's the one. Yeah, it's pretty much just the outfit that I was using in that previous thing, except now you got all the uh, the Dead Cells abilities. Whee! Okay. <laughs> Alright, that should be... I think that's a good... Uh, that, was a, that was a good goal for Dead Cells today. Ah! No, I just said that it's just like... Uh, the, the Dead Cells is not allowed. <laughs> yeah, is that it for today? Yeah, I mean, it's already pretty late. I think I'm just gonna call it on this one. I had a pretty good run. Uh, I still need to go get the the sword though, yeah. Because it's like I didn't, I I don't know where you find that. I was sort of thinking that it was just beat Richter mode. I guess not though. But yeah, that is. Oh, I was thinking maybe doing like some Hitman, but ah, uh, 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 